What's up, music fans of the internet? I am Kevin. I'm Derek. And together we are last week's album, the only reviews with two different views. And in this episode, we're talking about Israel Nash's new album, Israel Nash's Silver Season, and asking the big question, what makes this cosmic country so simple yet so sweeping? But before we get into that, we'll kick things off like we always do, drinking a beer. Cheers, Derek, and everyone at home. Cheers, Kevin, everyone at home. Israel Nash is an Austin-based singer-songwriter. This is his fourth album. Um, actually, interesting story about the album itself. He built a studio on his land just outside of Austin, Dripping Springs. And uh, the band was ready to begin recording in late May, and then it got flooded. But the band persevered. They dug trenches. They hauled sandbags. They cleared mud. And then they plugged in, and they recorded a tape with Grammy Award-winning producer Ted Young, who's worked with Kurt Vile and Sonic Youth. And thankfully, now we have Israel Nash's Silver Season as a result. So let's talk about what it sounds like. Derek, what do you think? Kevin, I think uh, Israel Nash's Silver Season sounds like Sturgill Simpson, The Eagles, and Dawes keep on rocking the free world. Ah, nice, nice. Uh, I think it sounds like Neil Young corralling a band of horses along a phosphorescent countryside. If nice. You know. And with that, let's talk about some key tracks. Derek, what are you going with? Uh, I'm going with Willow and Strangers. All right, I'm going to do The Fire and the Flood in Lavendula, so why don't you kick us off with Willow? Yeah, Willow uh, is the opening track. It kind of starts with uh, this kind of organ-sounding uh, riff floating in, uh, joined by this even drum beat, and then really kicks off with strummed acoustic guitar, just uh, mournful, uh, weeping steel pedal guitars. Um, great use of layered vocals here. At one point, uh, the lead and group kind of split and kind of do a call and response thing. And just over, you know, the, the message of the song is it's, it's a message to his daughter as he has to hit the road a lot for touring. And just a really, uh, you, you can just feel the emotion in here uh, through his voice. And, and it's built beautifully through the sound itself. Nice, nice. Um, yeah. Next up, I've got the fire and the flood, which I'm calling a canyon western whatever that means. Uh, and it's about the inevitability of change. Vocally, he goes in sort of a deeper whisper as opposed to his normal sort of falsetto tenor range. Instrumentally, there's acoustic strumming, slow trotting drums, pining pedal steel. And it's a pretty somber track, but it's still really driving. And it's got a great climax with swirling guitars and wailing vocals to make for just a really great track. And tell us about Strangers, Derek. Strangers is a six plus minute opus, uh, just exploration into everything in the world. Stranger, there's lots of layered sounds here, um, just lots of build ups and uh, uh, you know, build, uh, breakdowns, um, tons of acoustic guitar, longing steel pedal, lumbering electric guitar riff uh, enters at times, drums, and at other times, light percussion. It really kind of ends in a uh, just kind of dizzying electric guitar freak out. And the, in, the lyrics were especially interesting to me here, really kind of questioning uh, this negative context of the term stranger. And it really kind of explores that, you know, stranger just people you have not been acquainted with, as he's uh, kind of said on the, uh, some interviews. Um, and really, this kind of thematically reminded me of Warren Zevon's Splendid Isolation but like from the complete opposite direction as Warren Zevon approached it. So um, I just really kind of liked it, really captured my attention. Nice, nice. I like that comparison, Warren Zevon. Uh, next up, I've got Lavendula, which is more than a fun word to say. It's a great <laughs> song. Uh, acoustic guitar, pedal steel riffs, thumping bass, popping drums. My favorite part is a sort of staccato crashing chorus. Later, there's some orchestral strings that make a rare appearance on the album. We get some pedal steel theatrics, and it's about the winter season and its significance. Um, and overall, you know, it kind of occurred to me, I think this will be a great winter album to listen to during that time of year. And the song, uh, Lavendula itself, has an, it's got an upbeat vibe that makes it, I think, stand out on the record uh, from other tracks. And with that, best lyrics. Derek, what are you going with? 
I'm going with one from the fire and the flood. Um, it's kind of short, but I think it's very poetic and just, um, it was the first line of the song and just completely captured my attention. Uh, unfortunately, you had called it earlier as a key track, so I couldn't really talk about it until now. And he says, catacombs and rosebud ashes sailing by the sailboat caskets. Uh, just very descriptive imagery here in, you, you know, uh, taking the commonplace and then, you, you know, showing how bizarre it is to see that stuff in the event of a disaster. Um, you, you know, kind of going back to your uh, you, telling of how they record this album. Um, sailing by the sailboat caskets, just especially powerful uh, right there. Really enjoyed that. Yeah, that is good. Uh, I, however, am going to go with a line from A Coat of Many Colors. Uh, it's the opening line. He sings, I don't live like the others. I see twice as many colors, which would be a really cool superpower. But I think it captures the essence of the album. Uh, if you sort of close your eyes and listen, this album to me sort of becomes this moving watercolor as sounds and colors fade in and out, not to get too trippy or esoteric, but... I don't know. That's just kind of what it sounds like. It's very colorful in my mind. And with that overall rating and answering the big question, what makes this cosmic country so simple yet so sweeping? Derek, what do you think? I think the biggest thing that jumped out to me here was the very deliberate approach, it seemed. And I think you really kind of touched on that earlier in describing just the myriad of sounds and layers built throughout here. Um, as I kind of described earlier, even in a six minute song, um, he introduces a number of individual elements that just um, it come in and out and at the end just are, start playing together. And, and then you get a full grasp of the uh, in, immensity of the sound that is being created. Um, you know, on, on first blush, you may not, uh, it, you know, as the individual sounds are kind of, kind of going in and out, you, you, you kind of you may underestimate it. Um, that being said, I think I totally agree with you on the winter seasonality of this album. If, you know, songs, albums can take on, uh, you know, seasons, if you will. Um, but yeah, I, I, overall, I really dug uh, how he utilized a lot of classic country elements as we kind of described instrumentation, um, you know, right along those lines, acoustics, pedal, peel, uh, pedal guitar, some distorted electric. Great job of layering. Um, that, if anything, I felt maybe some of the songs went on a little bit too long um, and maybe were too free flowing in nature to uh, maybe make be as effective uh, describing some of the points. But overall, I feel like that's, uh, you, you know, it was hard to find a lot to uh, nitpick about this album. So that's why overall I'm giving this one a four out of five. Really liked it. Nice, nice. Uh, we will agree and disagree. Uh, what makes it so simple yet so sweeping? Kind of agree with you here. They stick to the same instruments, but they use each instrument and its respective powers to great effect. Um, to echo what you were saying, they do a great job of mixing. Even acoustic guitar gets its time to shine, which is rare in an album in this day and age. Um, and I think they've really focused on the sound they want to create, but they're willing to color outside the lines a little bit to get there. Overall rating on the pro side, a lot of Neil Young vibes, and I mean that as a complete compliment. Um, not just in his voice, but also in the guitar dynamics. And he adds some psychedelia that I think gives him uh, and the band their own unique sound. Um, and I'm willing to bet these guys jam in live shows, which would probably be pretty rad to see. Overall, the sound is very enveloping and affecting, and you can't listen to it. Um, at least I couldn't listen to it and not get swept away with it. On the con side, I think it can get a little dreary. Some of the songs can kind of blur together in sound. I think it's a great sound, but I'd prefer a little bit more variety, mainly in tempo. A lot of them are sort of slower and downtrodden, and I'd love to hear what happens if they crank it up a little bit speed-wise. But uh, agreeing with you on overall rating, Derek, four out of five from myself as well. So there you have it, guys, an eight out of 10 for Israel Nash's Silver Season by Israel Nash, so definitely give this one a listen. Let us know what you guys think of it. Don't forget to subscribe to us here at last week's album where we're bringing you the only reviews with two different views. You can also check out the podcast. And as always, I'm Kevin. I'm Derek. We'll see you next time, guys. Cheers.